Thanks, Simon, and good morning, everyone. Um, pleasure to be here today. Um, I'm, I'm quite pumped this morning. I had my COVID vaccine yesterday, had the Pfizer, so a bit sore arm, um, but um, really pleased to be here this morning. So, uh, so thank you for taking some time out to, uh, to listen to us today. Um, I've only got a short session this first time round. I'm back on a little bit later. You'll be either glad or unglad to hear. Um, but I just want to introduce Cameron's session and talk a little bit about um, the joys of Autodesk Vault and data management, but more internal process automation and how we can use some really clever tools inside of um, Cool Orange and, and Power Jobs and, um, and job processes to start making mundane tasks easier and automating those, um, those processes behind them. Before I do that, I just wanted to have a one slide on Vault 2022. We're showing you a load of new features today, specifically with Chris um, a little bit later on this morning. Um, but sometimes Vault features are a bit dry to demonstrate um, because it's data management. It's not the most exciting subject in the world. But I really wanted to push how excited I am about this year's Vault functionality in 2022. Um, it really feels this year that Autodesk are listening to the community with Vault, um, looking at the forums and listening to the feedback and pushing new features that match those requests. Um, so inside of Vault 2022, the features that have been added have kind of been aligned to certain personas. So we've got features that are aligned to authors or your traditional designers, if you like. We've got features that are aligned to an administrator of that Vault to make an installation easier, for example. We've also got um, those that are aligned to a participator, someone that's participating in a workflow or an engineering change order, but not necessarily using a CAD application. And just to breeze through these really quickly, and I'm not gonna spend any great deal of time looking at them, the list is there on the screen and it's uh, widely available online. Um, but just to pick out a couple of my favorites. So at last, we have trackable and traceable properties for both latest release date and approver, which we can push across into our revision table. This has been a bugbear for not just myself, but the rest of my team here at Man and Machine um, and throughout the industry, I guess, for a number of years. Um, and finally, we have that functionality embedded out of the box inside of Vault, which is great so that we can get that um, important data more easily inside of our uh, revision tables. Uh, we've got some... Um, some fantastic interoperability functionality. A little bit later on this morning, I'm gonna look at the inventor to Revit link and how that works this year. Vault has better understanding now of that link and how to handle those Revit documents that are linked inside of those inventor IAM assembly files. Um, and this year it's able to uh, better archive off old versions of the model and handle that model a lot easier, which is great. One of my favorite features in Vault over the past couple of years has been the duplication detection, which is a godsend when you're working on large projects. But it's been enhanced and extended this year to allow even greater control. It can now specifically recognize and identify mirrored components. It can identify um, exact matches better and handle them in a more appropriate way. Um, even down to looking at the material. So if it picks up two products that are the same, design-wise and everything else, but they have a different material, it will understand that actually they're not a duplicate because they use a different material. Um, so all of those like those, um, sorry, all of those new functions with those duplicates, um, including the ability to do fast metadata searching on those is, is better than ever before. Um, we've got an improved login feature inside of Autodesk Vault for your administrators. So we can now link an Autodesk Vault login to an Autodesk ID as well as your Active Directory domain accounts, which is fantastic. So that really helps streamline the administration process. Um, we can then look at that and convert those into what we call friendly names for a title block so that we don't have a domain username on our inventor title block or AutoCAD title block. It's actually showing us a more friendly CAD-based name, which is great. And last but not least, my personal favorite this year um, and long overdue is some incredible enhancements to the thin client. Um, the web uh, client for Autodesk Vault Professional. Um, at last, it's, uh, it's a lot more modern, it's a lot slicker. It works really well, whether you're on desktop or tablet. Obviously, we've got the mobile app now for Vault, which has been around for a year or so, um, and all of those are bringing some fantastic functionality for the non-CAD users. Specifically, this year in the Thin Client, we have a better viewer, which is inbuilt for both 3D models and 2D drawings, which is based on the Autodesk Online Viewer, which is fantastic. 
we've got the ability to work on change orders directly inside of the thin client um, the ability to select download and work on multiple files at any one time so you know we've got some fantastic functionality in vault 2022 um, really leveraging that uh, that um, modern connected smart and insightful data management that it uh, that it brings to the table but what if you want a little bit more what if like what simon said this morning we need to look at making those mundane tasks more straightforward, more automated. We want to take something that's potentially open to error and just make it happen in the background. One bugbear for me is the amount of people out there that are manually creating DXF files, manually creating step files, manually pushing out bill of materials, but they're doing it manually. The potential for human error there is vast because you've got to go and manually you know, update those every time you release or, or up rev or up issue a drawing or a design. And that's hugely open to, to, to error. So what I'd like to spend the next couple of slides talking about before Cameron shows you this reel is how we can really use Vault to drive people within your organization, different business units and different teams together using some extensions onto the Auth Desk Vault functionality. Um, now, we have partnered up with Cool Orange, who on num offer a number of different extensions. And today we're going to be focusing on Powered Jobs, which is an extended job processor for Autodesk Vault um, applications. They also offer further functionality in, um, in PowerGate, um, Power Jobs Client, and other um, applications as well, which allow you to further enhance. But the idea here is we want to extend the functionality you have within your Vault family of products. Now, it might be that you need to look at better ways to load data into the vault. That might be because you're new to vault and you need to get up and running. It might be because you've got a legacy messy vault that you need to merge into a, a cleaner, uh, more modern vault. It might be that you're moving or transitioning from um, a non-Autodesk data management system and you need something to help you automate that as best you can. We have the ability using some of these tools um, to take loading data en masse, that's files and metadata, including revisions and version history and stuff like that, from a local file system directly into your vault, or from an alternative data management system, or indeed merging multiple vaults together. The one we're focusing on today is enhancing. We're looking at how we can um, drive data compliancy, but more importantly, automate those repetitive tasks. Make them happen in the background so that you know they're going to happen and you know the files are automatically going to be updated. And you'll see Cameron demonstrating some of that live for you today. Finally, to connect the wider organization, the, the, um, the likelihood is, is you're going to be using a, an MRP system or an ERP system to control your bill of materials and purchase your, your parts. Um, we have the ability to connect those to Vault. We have the ability with... Um, some of the products we're talking about here to do that easier than we ever have before. Um, and again, I'll cover that in a bit more detail in a couple of slides. So let's focus on the designer's workflows, or if you're looking at Autodesk speech, the author's workflows with the 2022 functionality. And this is what we're talking about. File publishing. Is it a TIFF file that you're currently pushing out to file and print, view and print, sorry? Is it a PDF file? Is it a DXF? Is it a step? Do you need to automatically get Inventor, the BIM interoperability tools, um, to produce a Revit family file or an industry foundation class file whenever you approve a, a drawing. We can do that automated file publishing for you in the background automatically, as well as better batch plotting, communication automation, ping a message onto a Microsoft Teams chat, upload a file automatically onto a, an email notification or into SharePoint or whatever it might be. If we align those really beneficial tasks with the ability to auto-generate and export a BOM, ensure that the data compliance is there, and even look at better workflow routing to do four-phase approvals, for example, we've got some really useful designers' tools which, to be honest, without breaking the bank, really leverage Vault's internal power and drive it even further. If you're looking at integrating your business together, we can connect typically siloed systems to make sure that they are more enhanced. Naturally, you have people within your organization that need to use Autodesk Vault. You have people within your organization that don't use Vault, but they're using ERP every day. 
those two systems should be talking to each other because you have bill of materials management in both. You have the item numbers in both. You don't want to be going through and, and typing the same number in both systems or exporting a bomb and manually entering that bomb into your purchasing system. We can connect those systems, whether it's SAP, whether it's Dynamics Nav, whether it's Oracle. Come and talk to us because if you can reach out in what you're struggling with, we may well have a solution that will make that process a little bit more streamlined for you. And you'll be surprised at how accessible that is. What we're trying to do with these tools is take an already fantastic data management product and drive better collaboration, drive better connections between your organization so that your engineering, purchasing, production and service teams get the data they need, the conversations they need when they need it, whether that's inside of their own login in ERP or directly through Vault. I won't re-go over the bits that uh, are on the bottom because we've already talked about them essentially there on, the, on the screen. But the idea of linking everything together so that you've got a single process that just works. A nice story, but how does that actually work? So if I just strip this back, um, and I'm not going to take too much of Cameron's time. I've got another couple of minutes before he, um, he comes and shows us this in, in reality. But because the actual presentation style, I guess, of a... a an automated job it's difficult for you to appreciate what's actually happening so I want you to take one final slide here to explain what's going on mainly during Cameron's demo so we're going to be demoing um, some scripts through cool orange power jobs these are essentially driven by Windows PowerShell scripts so within reason you can kind of get it to do anything um, to a certain degree but it's all built on the standard functionality that you all have in your vaults using your Autodesk Vault job processor. It's the same idea, it's the same concept, and actually it works off the back of it. So it's kind of embedded into the Vault ecosystem. So what you're gonna see Cameron do is driving a, a, a job from the Vault client. That might be one of two ways. It might be manually saying, I want you to go and create an, ER, a, a, an, an ERP export or a bomb export now, please. Um, and it will go and do the job. It might be, okay, well, I want to transition my file from for review to released, and at that point I want it to create a nice clean PDF. But if I went from released to work in progress, I want it to put a watermark over that PDF. All of that will get triggered to a job queue controlled by your Vault server, and then the Cool Orange Power Jobs job processor will pick those scripts up and run through them in the background. You're not necessarily going to see the scripts running today, but you will see the results from them appearing and updating inside of Vault. And really, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to my colleague Cameron, um, who is one of our junior application engineers, a rising star here at Man and Machine in the UK. Um, and I'm really excited to hear his presentation and, and see um, the, the power of power jobs brought to life and share some of these more repetitive mundane tasks with you. So uh, just give us a few seconds while we change laptops over. Uh, we'll go into a holding video and we'll be back in about a minute or so. this morning. Uh, so yeah, as Rob confirmed earlier, I'm just going to take you through some of the uh, automation processes that we've got available to us using the um, the Cool Jobs um, Power Jobs processor. Uh, sorry, the Cool Orange Power Jobs. Uh, so as you can imagine, if you have your if you're one of the reviewers for for your company and and needing to review any parts, assemblies, or drawings. Um, you usually have to go within Vault to your through your review process and 
and you want to kind of manage your your drawings and your PDF exports throughout each of these individual processes. So what we've managed to do within Vault just to ease up this process a bit, um, we've created a search a saved search folder. These are pretty simple to to set up. Essentially, all you'd need to do is is within your your search tab over here if you wanted to sort of configure the search a little bit deeper you could expand that out and, and add any properties you want to add to your your search as soon as you've got the search that you want for in this case we've got a review so any file that is at review um, those will show up within our files for review profile or saved folder here we essentially just go into the options and save the search from here it's currently saved so it won't allow us to do that now but if you had to have any any custom searches that you wanted to go back to, uh, those will be added immediately to your saved search folders or your search folders here. So at the moment we've got a files for review. We've also got two um, P PDFs folders here, or this is for the assemblies, I suppose, and, and the part that we're going to be adjusting a little later on, just for ease of use during this demonstration. Uh, so if we just go straight into into this, we can see that we've got these particular files at for review. If we're wanting to now move these into a released state, we want to take these files themselves and, and have the, the PDFs show either a watermark for when they're at review or when they're at work in progress so that anybody that's viewing the PDFs knows the state at which it's in and knows whether these these PDFs will be accurate to, to the assemblies and drawings that that we want to use currently. If I go into these ones, you'll see we've currently got these PDFs set up here. I'll just open up this one here for our assembly. And you'll see, based on the cool orange power jobs, that we've managed to get a watermark printed onto the PDF, just notifying us that the current PDF is, or the current assembly is, is out for review. If you are a reviewer and you wanted to then review this file and have a look at the, the assembly or the part um, just to see if, if everything is up to up to standard, you could then come in at this review point and, and measure up or, or make sure that the, the assembly looks correct and the drawing itself looks correct for that. If you're happy with that, we can then just move all of these files that we need to on into the released state. So I'll just select all of the files that are currently within here and we're going to change state move these over to the released state I'll just okay this and immediately we can um, I'll just change we'll let the um, drawings go the part go through first quickly into the release state Let's do the assembly quickly. One of them is not allowing the other one through. If we go into the release, this window, bring it up a bit. We just have a quick look. This part doesn't want to be, isn't that released currently? So that's why it's just blocking this. Let me push this one quickly through to release and see if that'll sort this out for us. Apologies for this. Let's have a look. Yes. So make sure it's not selecting the PDF itself. So what I'll do is quickly just open up these ones individually to make sure we've got a fresh version of them. That's because I've got two instances of Inventor open. Let me just open it up through Inventor rather. So again, we'll just see through the Vault tab here. Uh, once we log in quickly with the same user and we open up the file from within Vault once Vault decides to open up. If we open up from Vault, you can see we've got that same those same saved searches within here. So if you do set them up within your your Vault client, they'll also come through within the app itself within Inventor. So just from within here, I just want to open up any of these files that are at review at the moment. 
just open up the part quickly and check it out just to make sure we've got a local copy of that you can see we've got our, our parts set up here just want to check this one in quickly from within here and do a quick property update just in case it's needing some of the updates in here and check that back in quickly switch back over to vault and try that again push everything out to released so the window keeps expanding a bit too far out So we can just see that we've, we've got the um, a non-compliant equivalent on this drawing here. So I just want to quickly open that one up. Uh, again, quickly just through Vault. Just open up that drawing quickly. Check it out. Update the properties. And check it back in quickly. Now we're back on track. If we take these files and again attempt a uh, move to release for all of them, you'll see it's, they've all moved through to released. Now in the background, we go, we have a script that allows us to um, to take that same PDF and uh, run through the Cool Orange job processor again. This time it'll take off the watermark and, and we'll be left with a clean watermark with a with a clean PDF without a watermark. We can see in the background we've got our cool orange power jobs running through each of the individual jobs here. And that will be triggered for each drawing and part, and it'll pick up if any of those need a PDF and then generate that for them. Once those have gone through, if we go into these folders here we should see once they've gone through that the PDFs themselves have updated and we'll have a clean PDF for those. So this is for the part itself. And if we go into the assembly, open up the PDF for the assembly, we've now got a clean PDF of the assembly as well. This is the one that had the for review watermark earlier. Now that your, your PDF is out for review you can then again go from your design to your deployment and you can push the, these PDFs out to anybody who needs access to these if for instance you had to make any adjustments to the assembly itself or the parts themselves and and wanted to push these back to work in progress we can again through that same trigger process start a, um, a, a job that will create a PDF that has a work in progress watermark on, on the drawing itself. So if we take those same parts and those assemblies, we'll just release the parts first onto a work in progress state. This will then bump up our revisions from revision A to revision B. And at the same time, trigger that change um, with the PDF itself. I'll show you how we set that up now as it goes through that process. So we'll just push out the assembly itself to, to work in progress as well. And you'll see it's, it's making that change now. And the way we set that up, um, obviously once uh, Cool Orange has been installed, we can go into our administration vault settings, into the behaviors and life cycles. And we can see we're currently using the flexible release process. 
during each of these life cycle state changes. So for example, our transformation from work in progress to for review, we currently have under our custom job types, a man and machine draft PDF. And this is the one that will create the watermark on the PDF. We've also got from for review to released. This one will create a new DXF and a new PDF. The new PDF will be the, the clean PDF that, that no longer has the watermark on. And we've got the Man and Machine new DXF, which will create a DXF on any of the from any of the drawings that have a I property called create DXF. And if that value of that property is yes, which I'll show you in the in the drawings a little later on. But essentially what that will do is the script will look through the properties of that particular file as it comes through. And if it ma if the properties match, so if the create DXF property is yes, it will then go through and, and actually create the, the DXF for that particular drawing. We've also got then finally the released to work in progress. And that is again the draft PDF, which is the one that creates the watermark. So you've got various options available to you um, to be able to create the the PDFs with watermarks and obviously the ones without and then also to create any DXFs that should have given those guys enough time to to run through that process. So I'll just open up that PDF again and we should see that it's now work in progress. So this will at least allow anybody who wants to see the, the drawings they'll notice that um, this particular assembly or even in the other one for the particular part, those are currently at work in progress and that they're being changed. So we're just gonna go in quickly and make a few adjustments to those assemblies and to those parts quickly. So from within our vault, we're gonna go open up the drawing of the assembly. I'm gonna check it out and make the adjustments that are required. So just for this particular example, we're just gonna edit the one part, which will be this plate here at the back. We just, from the drawing itself, go in and uh, open up the part from within. Once this is open, we can come in and we, in this instance, we've noticed that uh, this particular plate needs a bit of detailing the edges need a bit of a, a fillet and uh, we want to add a few little holes in here just for the demonstration we've suppressed these parts but if you had to create the new features it, it would pretty much be the the same process so you'd go into the part itself just by double clicking and we've currently got these suppressed but if you had to create again the the features themselves we, we could do so and it's pretty much the same process. So I'm just gonna unsuppress these features quickly. It's wanting us to check the part out before we make those changes. So unsuppress the, the fillets on the side and the extrusions down, down the middle of the, the part there. We can then also go into the drawing for this particular part, open the drawing from Vault, make sure that we check that out you can see we've got the drawing has updated already with the part. So if we wanted to leave it as is, we could do so. Otherwise, if we wanted to, we could add some more annotations onto there. So if we want to dimension the hole itself, the radius of that, as well as if we wanted to dimension the distance from the edge. Just add one more here quickly. You'll be very familiar, obviously, with, with creating these drawings, but then we've got the ability now from with using these scripts just to, to actually go through and, and update these within the, the drawings themselves as well. So I'll just save and check in the drawing. Just the drawing for now. I'll go back to the part in a sec. In fact, before I do that, I'm going to check this out again quickly. And I want to show you through the process of, of creating the DXF for this. So if we've decided that we want a DXF for the sheet metal part, we can come into the properties of this drawing itself, into the I properties. And we have a 
custom property here called create DXF. This is currently set to no. We can change this and set this to yes and set modify. If this wasn't there and it was something that you wanted to, to add in here, we could always add in a new property from, from the top over here uh, and give it a, a type as well as a value. We're happy with the yes on the create DXF, so we'll just apply that again, save it again, and then check this drawing in. Let's check out the PDF as well. Uh, the DWF as well. I uh, will leave the part out for now and check those in. It's just going to remove those from my local machine. Perfect. We'll then go back into the assembly, return to the top level and we're happy with the way that this has changed so we'll check this assembly in quickly again through the vault tab we're not going to make any further adjustments perfect that's already checked in so that's great i'm just going to shut this down the last one we want to just ensure is checked in is the drawing itself and you'll see that the um, little preview here the view has updated with the part that's been edited we're not going to create a dxf for this because we obviously don't need it uh, so we'll just check our um, our drawing in from here. We'll go back into Vault then quickly. Make sure that we refresh. And you'll see these two are currently checked out. So we'll just check them back in. If it will let us. It wants us to check it in through Inventor, so we'll just do that quickly again. Uh, so this is currently showing it's checked in, so that's fine. I believe we should be good. I'll just give a quick refresh on here, and that should sort that out. You can see we're currently on revision B, which is because we've made the edit to that particular one. So what we'll do now is we'll take these two from the part itself and Try this one quickly again. I see it's the, the part itself that's still checked out. So I'm just going to go into Inventor quickly and, and open that up and, and just check that back in quickly. So if we go into the part, we want to just check that back in. It didn't check in for some reason um, when I was checking everything else in. Uh, that's the drawing. quickly open up the part and check that back in. So that should be in and the part drawing should be checked in as well. If we refresh this we should see those are not checked in. The PDF itself isn't checked in yet, which I'll just quickly check in. We'll leave that for now. It'll update now because we're able to make those changes. Let me just undo the checkout quickly just to ease that up a bit. Make sure the other ones are done as well. Perfect. So what we'll do now is we'll just take the assembly minus the drawing, the PDF, and we'll push this again through to our review process. We'll also take the drawing of the part and do the same with that. Again, in the background, because we're going through that state change, it'll then trigger our cool orange job processor, which will create a new PDF, a new draft PDF for these drawings, as well as checking the, the parts themselves, which won't necessarily obviously have a PDF created. It'll still run through every single file we put through. So 
just for the demonstration purposes we've, we're only pushing through four files just to to quicken up the pace a bit but it, in essence we could have all of our files going through at once and um, we'd obviously want to have your job process on on a different machine just to to speed things up a bit now that those have gone through we can go and have a quick look at the pdf make sure that our um, it's currently a work in progress so that job's still busy going through there if we go look at the pdf of the assembly we've got for review on there the last two things i want to quickly show you is while those are going through i just want to make sure they're finished you can see cool orange is finished going through so i'm just going to push these through to released quickly we can actually again use that same search for review select all of the files that are currently in here push them to released because we're happy with with the changes that we've made from within there and those will go ahead released and again the pdfs will update in the background to create a a pdf that doesn't have a watermark on the other thing to note is with the with the part drawing we've obviously included the create dxf which will be listed now within the job queue itself we've got we'll have a create dxf or new dxf job that that'll run through in the background as well as part of the the processes as soon as that's finished and gone through i'll show you what that does for us what we can do in the meantime is if we wanted to create a bill of materials for the assembly itself we can also go into the drawing of the assembly we've got our power jobs tool here with the client which allows us to actually trigger the the jobs themselves from from within vault so we've got the list over here of all of the the scripts that are available to us the one we've got set up is the mana machine erp this will go into the drawing itself into each of the parts and and create a bill of materials for that so we'll let that carry on in the background um, it's actually running right away so that means that the other one has uh, completed through so i'll just show you for the part itself it's created that dxf over here for us which will look much the same as our um our pdf except obviously in, in the dxf format Cameron, sorry to butt in. Can you show that that DXF is linked back to the original design? Yes. A specific script link those files back to their drawing or assembly or part that they're related to. It does. Yes. So as you can see from the drawing itself here, we've got an attachment. So that DXF is actually attached to the to the uh, drawing itself. Um, you'll also notice that within that attachment is the PDF. And then it has the revision within the name of the, the DXF as well. So you've got the ability to, to link those in as part of the cool orange scripts. You also see, lastly, um, with the, the bill of materials and the ERP setup, we've managed to get a, a full bill of materials from that drawing itself, which picks up the assembly. i just let that open up quickly. And we've got our bill of materials here with the quantity, material, part number, and description. Awesome. Well, that's all I have, all I'm going to be showing you today. Thank you so much for your time. I'm going to hand back over to Robin.